Good morning. Welcome back to United Methodist Church of Plano. We are in our last week of Advent. So today we're going to be in the scriptures of Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 1 through 8. But before we get there, uh, we've got a couple announcements. Uh, we'll be Christmas Eve, we'll be live in person and on Facebook at uh, 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. And so if you're available and, uh, and you're around, you want to stop by, come on in at uh, between 5. We'll do the one service at 5 and then do uh, our late service at 11 p.m. And uh, uh, the 11 p.m. service will feature communion. Also, uh, we're only going to gather this week, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And then uh, we'll, we'll be off Thursday and then regu our regular day off on Friday. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna be in some uh, some scriptures uh, for the next few days and then be off for a while. Uh, but today I want to talk about Jeremiah twenty three verses one through eight. As we've been taking time, hey Diane, good morning. As we've been taking time since uh, the first week of Advent, and and sometimes we've gone off the path a little bit, but for the most part we've been trying to lay the groundwork of the promises and the fulfillment that happened on Christmas. And then we've been looking beyond just Christmas time and Calvary, but looking towards Jesus' second coming. Technically, we have been at, in Advent. Hey, Arlene, good morning. We've been in Advent, or a second Advent, since Jesus rose from the grave and then went home to take his rightful seat. On the throne. The disciples watched him be taken up into heaven. And so technically, we're awaiting, we're anticipating his second advent. But I thought it was important for us to go back and be reminded of the bedrock scriptures from the Old Testament and into the New Testament and see God's fulfillment of scripture. You might remember that over the course of this time, we keep going back to the fact that this happened, that scriptures might be fulfilled. Jesus came in this way, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. He was named this way, that the, the scriptures might be fulfilled. There's this thing that goes along with Jesus' uh, first coming as he enters this world. He fulfills scripture. Now we see that he's obedient. He gives himself as a ransom for you and for me and from everybody from Adam and Eve on who will receive him, culminating in his ultimate return as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So uh, let's pray. You can uh, crack open your Bible, grab your tablet, your phone, however you want to handle the scriptures this morning. Find your way to Jeremiah chapter 23. Verses 1 through 8, and uh, let's pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, you are the one true King. You are our all in all, the Almighty Sufficient One. You are the one and only true and living God. There is none like you. You are Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, Adonai, Jehovah. Without you, we are lost. So, Father, as we tackle Scripture this morning, we're asking that you be present with us. Lord Jesus, come and guide our study. Speak to us as individuals. Be with us wherever we might be viewing this. Whether it's today, the 21st of December 2020, or if it's in a couple of years, and someone stumbles across this and doesn't know why, be with us. Guide us, lead us, open our heart to receive your scripture this morning. We pray it all, Father, in the victorious name of Christ, who is our Savior. Amen. Amen. So let's find our place in Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. Jeremiah says, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, 
concerning the shepherds who care for my people. Now this is Jeremiah has been quoting the Lord. You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold. And they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. When I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In the days of Judah, in his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. So one of Jesus' names is, the Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, and they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them, then they will dwell in their own land. So let's tackle a couple of promises here. First of all, we see that God's going to raise up this righteous branch and he'll reign as king and deal wisely and execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In the days of Judah, in his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. Well, we know that that hasn't come to pass yet. Israel, at the current time, does not dwell in peace. Hey, Lynn, good morning. But we do know that that righteous branch has come. Just as has been foretold from the beginning. The promise is a now and not yet. And you've heard, you've heard that before. You've heard it from me. And you've probably heard it from other Bible teachers. That we live in kind of a dual citizenship. We live as part of the kingdom of God, yet we live here on earth. The kingdom of God has come, but it's also not yet. It's, it's fulfillment in an earthly sense, sense has not been completed, but it is coming. And when he comes, now listen, verse 3, Then I will gather the remnant of the flock out of all the countries where I've driven them. When Jesus comes, when he returns... These scriptures will be fulfilled. And we've already seen part of that, as I've mentioned in other studies, where, where Israel became a state in 1948. And from that point on, people with heritage from the land of Israel have been flooding the Holy Land. They've been, they've been coming back from the four corners of the earth. And I know the earth is not square, it's round. But they've been coming from all over, from the places where they've been driven to, God has been calling them back. But there is also an eternal message that God's going to be call, bringing us all together. As Paul talks about us being grafted into the family of God. And that through Jesus, we all become children of Abraham, children of promise. Verse 4, I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. So here's another thing. Uh, he's not going to forget anybody. There's not going to be any of us, any stragglers like, oops, I forgot Saunders over there. Oh, oh well, too bad. No, no one will be missing when the final gathering happens. Hey, Sandy, good morning. Tell Larry we said hi. He will miss not a one. And do you notice after 
many of these statements declares the Lord declares the Lord I will do this or this will happen declares the Lord it is vitally important for us to understand when we're reading scripture it is what God says when we order our life when we when we think about promises when we think about what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ we must live under declares the Lord he is the authority he is the one that is in full control whom we worship and need to follow. And when the Lord declares something, not Jeremiah, not a pastor, not, when the Lord declares something, we can count on it actually happening. I can make a declaration now, and it has no authority. But when God declares something, we're called to honor it, to believe it, and to wait for it. And why can I say that? Because the Lord, when he declares something, has never not done it. When he declares something will happen, it happens. When he declares something won't happen, it doesn't. And when he declares that he's going to save his people, when he's going to raise up a righteous branch... To sit on the throne of David, he will do it. 2,000 years later, we've seen that happen. And we continue to see the work of Christ fulfilling the declarations of God. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. He shall reign as king and deal wisely. And execute, execute justice and righteousness in the land. Our land, our world is, is crying out for righteousness and justice. For perfect leadership. One day that will happen. As Christ reigns and rules the universe, we will be under this, this pure, this, this righteous, and this perfect justice system. There will be no more bribes. There will be no more corruption. There will be no more injustices for the righteous branch, the king of kings, the pure and holy Christ, our sinless savior, savior will rule with a perfect superiority. And it will be a kingdom of righteousness justice and I'll add of mercy for all of us know who have surrendered our life to Christ that he is merciful and full of grace he is the tender good shepherd he is the righteous branch Verse 7, therefore, behold, the days are coming. Here's the key phrase, declares the Lord. When they shall no longer say, and we quoted, as the Lord lives, the people of, who led the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Verse 8, but they will say, as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring. So now he's talking about not just leading Israel through the Dead Sea and rescuing them from Egypt. But now we'll be saying, as the Lord lives who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where they have been driven out, then they shall dwell in their land. There is a later fulfillment coming. There is a time when, when God is going to bring all of this together. And Israel and us, as we saw in Galatians, we've seen it in Colossians, Paul talks about it in Romans, about us being by faith in Christ, grafted into the family of faith, that we would be grafted in and adopted as children of Abraham, children of the promise. 
Meaning, we too will be recipients of this time of peace, of celebration, of safety, security, free from all injustice, free from sin, sickness, and death. There's coming a day when Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Glory, will rule a kingdom like we've never seen. He will bring restoration. He will bring tenderness. And he will bring the peace that we all seek for. Began with the promise in Genesis begins its fulfillment on Christmas. It conquers sin and death at Calvary. And then it gives us hope for the return of the Savior. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for these words of your prophet Jeremiah. Thank you that, that we have hope in the midst of absolute chaos. That through you, the righteous branch, we have a hope of peace. And we actually experience your power and your peace and your comfort here in our days of turmoil. But there is coming a day when you will say, enough. We don't need to know what that day is, Lord. But because you've declared it. And Jesus, you fulfilled. We know that what we hope for will actually happen. Continue to give us stamina, endurance, and help us to thrive in the midst of difficulties, keeping our eye on you, Jesus, and remembering what the fulfillment of your promises will bring. And that will be a universe that is at peace. And that we who dwell on the earth will dwell in a time of peace and an eternity of peace, joy, hope, and love that we can't comprehend. Continue this work you've begun in us, Jesus. We pray it in your name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. We'll be back tomorrow and Wednesday, and then we'll be looking forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve. Have a great day.